we have probably, I would say about 15 different shocks. This actually automatically fills the shock with oil. You can see that's just raw, beautiful machining. So we'll test it like that about seven or eight times. You sure that's big enough? It's big, oh yeah. <laughs> and that's what we got. We got right on the money. Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm in a small town near St. Louis, Missouri with my good buddy Marcus from M2 Shocks. And inside his building, we have the world's most powerful Kawasaki Ninja H2. And Marcus is gonna do something very special to the suspension on my machine today because we all know a 352 horsepower Ninja H2 is useless if you can't harness its power. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. For returning subscribers, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. I'm very excited to see what Marcus is gonna to do to my machine today. We're gonna to test it out on the streets once he's done, but for right now, let's go inside and see what Marcus is up to. My main man, Marcus. Eve, how you doing? <laughs> What's up, buddy, how are you? Doing good, doing good. It's hot out there today, man. Yeah, it's hot in here too, though. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, show us what you got going on here, man. I'm very excited about well, what you're going to do to my H2. Uh, I'm excited for you. And yes, uh, I kind of gave you that pre-tour. We'll, we'll do the tour again for the video. Yes. But uh, just so while, while we're doing this, we actually, uh, you know, I've worked for a major shock manufacturer. And what I've done is in a small room, provided all of the assets and, 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 and tooling and machines that a big shop would have. And at the same time, I've actually added more, so we'll, we'll take a quick tour. Okay. Um, it starts off back here. We're gonna make a couple circles here. Okay. I need the exercise, Marcus. <laughs> okay. This is our incoming shelf. Now this is a lot of the service work right here. Yeah. And then if uh, on new orders, we got Miss Jenna, she's our operations manager here. And this hey, is Jenna. our business office here. Hey. Uh, and everybody likes the hoodies and sh uh, shirts. You always get a shirt with a shock, yeah. and the hoodies are always a favorite too. That's a nice touch. Yeah. Uh, once you actually order your shock, it'll actually uh, come in here. Okay. Goes on the build wall, and I'm going to have you turn around a couple times. But okay. This is this is the main row down here. So if you want to give a shot, yeah. This is where all the building takes place, and you're going to see all kinds of things. Everything from. Um, We've got all of our torque wrenches preset and labeled for the job that they are. Yep. And, um, you know, all the tooling set up. One of the things we do, we have probably, I would say about 15 different shocks and different configurations we make. So if you actually, and I'm gonna point you around yeah. right over here. These are what we call uh, piston caddies. Okay. And if you see, they're labeled for the type of uh, uh, shock it's gonna go into. And so we do everything from road racing to, to Harleys. You know, we do a lot. Of, <laughs> there's a lot of world records on our on our shocks with the Harley uh, baggers. What we do is we pre-build all of the stacks with the with the valving we need to achieve this. So to give you an idea, this is this is just for metric drag right here. Yeah. You can see uh, this is our C2 R2 stack, and then the next one's our C201 yeah. R2 stack, and. Um, you know, we got our spring shelf over here because you got to have a huge selection of springs. You don't know what you're spring in. What do the pounds, uh, do, what difference does that make? Well, that, that tells you how much resistance per inch that spring's going to provide. Okay. Now, uh, springs are really important on, on a shock because basically your rear end sitting on the seat, the swing arm pivot and the rear axle is a giant lever. The swing arm pivot is the fulcrum. So if you weigh a lot yes. and you sit kind of far rearward, and you got a long wheelbase, you're probably gonna need like a 1, thousand, 1,100 pound spring. Wow. But if you say you're only six inches over on, on your bike, yeah, and you only weigh a buck 50, almost in, in most cases, we're actually gonna go with either the stock or even softer than stock okay. with that. Because one of the things, once you extend the swing arm, you really want it to act a lot different than a road bike, you know, that's gonna, a road racing type bike. Yes. Uh, you want it to squat and dig as you go. Uh, we pre-assemble most of the components. There's four components to the shock. Mm -hmm. There's the shaft and, uh, and the base, there's the body tube, there's the reservoir, and then the fi final part of that is, is the spring and all the hardware around it. So if you turn around, you can see we've pre-assembled uh, some reservoirs. Okay. Now this is a double adjustable reservoir here and you can see our logo laser etched in there. Nice, it is. Okay, this is a triple adjustable here and all of our body caps here. Very nice. Now, one thing that's kind of cool about here, 
These are our body tubes here. And if you notice, they're all the same length. Yeah. We actually cut them to size. So it, it makes it easier for us because we only have to carry, we only carry one size inventory. So we'll cut it to whatever it needs and then we'll recut the seat for the, uh, uh, for the O-ring to sit and, you know, we can custom make a shock. We can have any shock put together usually within 24 hours if there's really a rush. Anyway, again, this is where all the assembly, all the assembly takes place here. Every station is, is really made to be ergonomically. You always have your towel holder there, yep. your wrenches and everything. Everything you need for that assembly area is right there. Makes it yes. easy. Uh, once the shock's actually built, we come on down here. This is actually our oil machine. Okay. And this actually automatically fills the shock with oil so that there's no messy uh, bleeding. It's, yes. it's, it's automatic, it's pretty easy. Very nice, it looks yeah. super expensive too. Uh, they're, I think they're like six grand now. And you know, we buy a lot of stuff from Olin's. Uh, yeah. Olin's actually, believe it or not, Olin's actually helped me get started. No way. Uh, yeah, um, I know that a lot of the guys over there and uh, we actually still buy parts from Olin's, uh, K-Tech, um, Penske actually still sells us parts to service uh, their customers. We're still set up as a dealer with them. Yeah. Um, we don't have to tell people anybody else's shock is junk or anything like yes. that. And, and, and the truth of the matter is I've had riders win oh, pretty much thousands of races on Penske, JRI shocks, and Olin shocks that I, I've worked with. And uh, they literally have won thousands of races. Wow. And so... You know, at some point, you if you look, you'll see a press release with sponsored by Penske Racing Shop because we ran the RPS race team for about nine years. Okay. And I think as a team, we won, I think it's 600, five or 600 races. Nice. Yeah. And it was an organized team. But again, uh, we don't have to tell anybody, oh, if you buy that, you're making it. No, we're going to talk about what we do, which is our whole process is designed so that we get you, we have the highest opportunity to give you 100% satisfaction. Yes. You're spending $1,000 on average. You want $1,000 of bang, actually you want $3,000 of bang out yes. of it. So, Usually, yes. Yes. We have a lot of chemicals. You're gonna see more Loctite up there, more oil, more contact cleaner. Uh, these are our tubes. We're gonna do another 100 reservoirs here uh, probably next week. I absolutely believe that the extensive dyno testing we do, not only make sure that we hit the numbers that we're looking for, but more importantly, it breaks the shock in properly. Mm -hmm. You know, and I am actually really uh, surprised at how few uh, issues we have with our shocks over the years. Now, uh, that's not to say, you know, there's somebody out there that doesn't have one that's three or four years old, and yep, it's leaking oil now, and probably needs to be sent in for service. I, I don't know of any right now, but uh, I can tell you, we do our best because I wanted our company to be different, yes. which is, you know, when you bought a shock from us and, and here's a customer, for instance, right here, everybody's name is put on the shock so that they know we actually made it for them. Nice. Now we do all kinds of small touches. Like if you notice the, the spin, the spring spins on this. Yes. Yeah. We use Torrington bearings top and bottom. Now I showed you a little while ago how a shock's a two piece unit, didn't yes. I? Yes. And so what we know is at high speed, the shaft can, and, and what I tell people is, if you ever take a spring and you compress it, it always goes sideways. It tries to go in one direction, it never goes straight down. Yes. So while that, while that spring is pressing on the, the shock body, it's kind of twisting it a little bit. By having those bearings in there, it gives relief for the spring not to want to bind up on the shock. I showed you something a little while ago, and we'll go over to the machine side. Okay. I'm gonna grab this. I said, this is one of the pieces we make. This is the clevis. This is the piece that goes on the bottom. Yes. And you're like, that looks, that looks pretty nice. Yes, it does. Uh, this is made out of 7075. And this, this is one of the things I want, when you pick up our shock, I want you to look at it and go, wow, mm -hmm. this is not something because, you know, when I worked at the bigger shop, we were looking at what's the cheapest way we can make that part. Just anodize over it and it will make up for all the crappy design we put on there. It'll look yes. like a pretty color. And I want our, our, yeah. <laughs> our Don't stuff. Don't damage that. Yeah. <laughs> I want all of our stuff though, to look like pristine machined equipment. Yes. And I, I, I think that's mission accomplished. And so when, when I screw this on here and this is our S1, I'll just put this in real quick. 
And this is one we use as a loaner and the customer. So, but it's a little dirty. I probably should have got a new one ready for you, but we're kind of sold out on some things right now. There you go. But when you look at our shock and again, normally we sell the reservoir, you can see the radius cut on all the collars and stuff. Yeah. You can see the radius cuts on the, on the perch. Now this is the, again, you notice this has got relief on there. So you can actually get a wrench in there to adjust the ride height. Yes. I don't know how many shocks are that you buy and you can't get the wrenches in there to unlock the, the jam nut to change the ride height. Yes. So when this sits in here, there's a lot of room there. It's got a nice big knob to adjust the damping. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you can get your hand in there real easy. Yeah. It's not metal, it's rubber. Because I've I've done that, and especially when the bike gets hot and you're trying to adjust it, not only are you burning your hands, you can't get a grip on top of it. Yeah. You know? And uh, you know, we use 7075 for the eyelets here, and you can you can see that's just raw, beautiful machining right there. Yes, it is. Looks like a piece of fine jewelry. Well, that's what we want it to look like because we want when you buy a shock from us we want something special and and, and again i'm going to show off one of our things about laser engraving we can logo our stuff so you can see the sportsman yeah. logo down there and we can do all kinds of things that the big yeah. shops do and, and and i love that part of it this is our main workhorse lathe right here this is uh stuff that we do uh any kind of fork work where we have to uh, cut the forks and rethread them we're going to use this and we have a steady rest involved this is a really really nice uh lathe this is our our fork station here okay uh it happens to have a set of h2 forks ready to, to to be modified right here nice and uh so we'll do all the nice little touches like put the lines up here so it'll be easy to adjust whenever we get fork work in we always etch the lines up top like superbike forks so that you don't have to have calipers to set your height for your forks you can just look at your lines and line them up they're all nice. five millimeters apart yeah now this one is a is a uh tube for a full cut fork and so it's a little bit shorter and it's obviously turned down on the outside like yeah. that. This is our ultrasonic parts washer and it's a little messy in here and I, I'm embarrassed we should have cleaned up a little better. That's good. But uh, this is gonna clean up your forks. It's gonna have a hot solution in there. And when you turn this on, it's like a giant jewelry cleaner. Nice. It vibrates the water. Nice. Yep. Uh, this is our uh, DRO uh, mill right here. Now, we actually just got done making a bunch of uh, clevises. So we had to finish our CNC mill which i showed you in our, our new part of our building yes i'm be glad when that gets up there because although i enjoy doing manual machining the, the cnc stuff sure is a whole lot nicer yeah that clevis you you uh just saw yeah. it started off as a three inch piece of billet mm -hmm. and and this is 7075 this is our first cut and that's what it looks like then then we flip it around and we have holders so that it goes exactly where it needs to. And then the next part is it puts the thread in. Nice. And then the next step is to go to the to the mill and then we put the flat and, and the groove in there. Yes. And But that's how, you know, you machine this stuff. And it, it's it's a big price saver with, with, we haven't had to raise the prices on our shocks because we're lowering our costs through all of this right here. This is our chop saw area, all of our stock. Um, cut saw or chop saw right there for, for steel and a grinder. And trust me, you've seen it. We're, you got to watch where you're walking around here. We yeah. are back to the gills. Yeah. This is our CNC lathe right here. And, um, you know, we got a couple batches. These, to give you an idea, we just got a batch of eyelets that came up. We, we need to make a hundred of those. Okay. And so, um, got that. And one of the things people don't realize is, is if you're going to do machining, if you look at the top of this right here, because this is for our body tubes, this is probably about eight thousand dollars just in tooling right here. Now this is one I, we spent. This was a four or a three thousand dollar boring bar. It's a can of metal uh, boring bar, and that was three thousand dollars. That's just so that we can make a body tube. Wow. Yeah. Uh, if you're gonna do this, you gotta spend a lot of money. It's gonna do a warm up, and basically the way we've got this set is that this test should not run until this is 100 degrees. It gives you a good warm up. Okay. But, and I think this is on the last test. So this is gonna be a pretty violent test. Okay. Now to give you an idea, this thing will warm up about one to two degrees every three seconds because it's, it's making so much damping force. Yes. To give you an idea, this will make at peak about 3,000 pounds of rebound force. Wow. Yeah, and then 
it will make probably around 400 pounds of compression force. And so that energy has to turn into something and usually it's heat. So yeah. it started off at about 78 degrees and now it's already up to 92. So in a moment, it'll kick off the test. Once it gets to 100 degrees. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you watch real close, you can see the machine almost jump up in the air. And that thing is heavy too. So you should see the shock really moving around. Yeah. Now, when we get done, I'm going to actually tell you, try to move that shock. Wow. So we'll test it like that about seven or eight times. Yeah. Now, put your hand on this right now. It's hot, man. Yeah, it's a, probably 115 degrees now. Yeah, now yeah. the drag race shocks get a lot hotter because they generate a lot more damping force. Yeah. A road race shock, we may run a road race shock uh, for about 15 minutes to get a full break in on the shock. Yeah. And that makes sure the piston man and all that is going to operate. This is, this is the crank at 12 o'clock. In other words, this up here is at 12. Yeah. Then as the crank's turning, this is now at nine o'clock. So that pin would be at the nine o'clock position. And then from nine o'clock, it's going to six o'clock. From six o'clock, it's going to three o'clock and then returning back to 12 o'clock. Yes. Now, what we're looking for is, you see how tight these lines are? See, you can see the line going in and coming back. It's yes. very tight. Yes. Okay, that tells you that shock's working really good. Now, yes. here's why. We have a thing called cavitation that occurs and also hysteresis. And this is what we're looking for. When you see a spread between the two, yes. that tells you cavitation. And the best way to explain cavitation is, is turn on your water hose. See a nice smooth stream coming out. It's really nice smooth stream. It's consistent, it's even, you can see it. Put your thumb a little bit over the hose. The stream pressure increases, but generally no bubbles. It's, it's still a, a, a pretty good looking stream of water. Yeah. But then put your thumb over most of it and it's a really high pressure steam stream of water, but you can see all the air bubbles in there yeah. from, from all the pressure and you know, the pressure is coming and going, coming and going. Yeah. That's cavitation. So when we see tight lines like this, that tells us the shock is working really, really well. Yes. So that's the kind of stuff we're looking for on this. She's gonna be pretty big. <laughs> yes, I like that. The bigger, the better. Yep. So that, that'll probably take a couple minutes to go and okay. we'll go ahead and prep the, uh, the other fork over here. Okay. You ready to go? I'm ready. All right. I like it. He's laser etching my forks here with the 650E logo. Nice. It's gonna look like that. So we're gonna wrap up the springs in case you ever, one of the nice things too, when we get done, yeah. you can go back to stock. Okay. This is not a permanent modification. This is what I call a soft cut. Well, uh, and to be honest, as expensive as the H2 is, and, and you do see when people are done with them, that it's easier to sell them as a regular stock wheelbase bike than it is extended length. Yes. So the ability to go back to your stock springs if you want is a really good value. Uh, you know, yes. you want to be able to do that. A couple of spacers we're going to be using. The nice radius cut ones. Yeah. Okay. Springs. And then let me get the dimensions on the fork seals because as always, we like to replace the fork seals. And, you know, I think everybody's seen the trick if they're a do it yourself or on these uh, fork seals, get yourself a little piece of plastic. It could be a sandwich bread wrapper, wouldn't yeah. matter. But that way these things will slide over the fork leg without getting torn. And it's a really good way to do them. So we're gonna get the OD. So this is a 55 by nine and a half by 10. So that's gonna be your standard uh, uh, ZX14 H2 one and then an old school GSXR. So we like to use the OEMs. Uh, they just seem to work a whole lot better. So we're gonna etch our lines up here. Then once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and polish this out and compound it out. Okay. You can see we already got our fixtures already in place. We've already set our DRO up here to, to have the proper zeros. So we just gotta cut every five millimeters basically. And this is where the patience comes in. Yes, I see that. Ah, there you go. And then the last cut at 40. 
There you go. Okay. Now, we're going to take the tool out of the way for safety reasons. Okay. Whenever, if you, if you do a lathe and you're going to polish, I always recommend you go in reverse. Uh, and really, it's so that if anything happens, and, and what I tell people, you'll break your knuckles all the time on the chuck. You can see I can hold my hand against the chuck. It's okay. You run that in forward and you get your hand in there, you're going to break the damn knuckles. Yeah. So always think safety. Sorry about that, Eve. No problem. We're going to use a little mother's polishing compound. Okay. And you're going to see this thing really, really, really lighten up real nice. It's going to shine up. Now this is where putting the old muscle in it really pays off. Yeah. Now there was a lot of discoloration on the bottom here, so we're gonna get that out here. Oh yeah, that already, I can tell you right now, that already looks a thousand times better. Yes, it does. Okay. No matter what, no matter if you got a clean side of the rag, I know once it touches the polish, you gotta switch to a dry rag that had, never had polish on it to get this off. So, looks like we got a, a good surface that just needs a little buffing out. We'll switch over to one of the clean sides of the buffing towel. One of the things you gotta do with uh, big piston forks and uh, any of these newer type, this is a, 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 it's a pressurized cartridge. It's not gas pressurized but it is pressurized. You need to put the cap on so that when you line up all this stuff, you put the laser etching logo so where it's perpendicular or it's 90 degrees to this, otherwise it won't line up. Oh, I like it. You sure that's big enough? It's big, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's big enough. Yeah. Okay. So I've laser etched this one. So this will be the right-hand fork, and this will be the left-hand fork, so I need to put the laser etching on that side. All right, so many, many hours later. What do you think, uh, Marcus? What, uh, we worked on this for what? Uh, I don't almost, about almost 24 hours. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, uh, I definitely felt my age. <sighs> everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Yes. And everything that did go wrong, you fixed. I will, I will say that. And he's got this bike <laughs> dialed, the F in. Look at these beautiful forks that he did for us. And he has the, uh, he has his logo there, the M2 Shock, Ninja H2, and above that, 650 Eve right there. And it looks absolutely fantastic. Everything that he did, but he, and he did a lot of stuff. And then we step to the back here and we see the M2 Shock with the, the reservoir. Is it a, what's that, is that called a reservoir? Yes, or? sir, okay. reservoir. And it looks brilliant. Um, we've got my serial number down there so that he keeps tabs of everything that he did with the shock. And it looks amazing. But more so than the looks, I mean, <laughs> the performance. And I didn't get a chance to ride this yet. I'm gonna ride it as soon as I get home. And uh, we'll make a follow-up video on that. But <laughs> just the overall look of it, you set the sag for me. Yep. We uh, jumped on the bike here. As a matter of fact, you can Absolutely. film me for a second. I'm gonna get on this thing. I was about to recommend that. <laughs> okay. And you tell me, what, what are we looking for when I mount this bike, Marcus? Well, first off, you know, you wanna see at least an inch of sag on, on something like this. Okay. And, and so once you go ahead and stand up. Okay. Now sit down one more time. Now, what we did is, this is one of the things, he had a stock shock on there before, mm -hmm. and when he was really under power, the back end would skip. Uh, Eve already said that his friends were saying, it looks crazy in the back end. Yes. Now, if you stand up, watch the tail section in the video, and you see, it comes up, you can watch it. And I went through the whole setup process uh, with Eve, which is, we don't want it so slow that we can literally just almost like watch the clock ticking when it comes up. <laughs> but it should be slow enough that you notice it's not coming up immediately. Yes. And that's what we got. We got right on the money. Now, if he's gonna go to the drag strip, definitely come up slower. Yes. And it's not super low like some of my other buddies, H2s, where I, I'll run the risk of you know busting the oil pan or damaging yeah. the, the, uh, well, the exhaust. The, you know, if uh, the, 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 uh, the name of the package you got for the forks is uh, basically we call it the 
extended street work package. Okay. It's also called Super Street. So it's lowered by about two inches. Okay. Now you saw, I actually used the preload adjuster to drop it another inch after we initially put it on there. Yes. And, and that would have been the 12 millimeter adjusters on the H2. Yep. And so you could raise and lower the front end a little bit. And we did put it on the scales of before and after. Mm -hmm. And we ended up, I think we got what, eight pounds? Yes. Eight uh, pounds. Extra in the front. Yeah. So that's like strapping eight pounds, you know, onto the uh, uh, fairing stay. I'm glad you mentioned that, yeah. Marcus, because now I don't, you, you see guys, there's no straps on this bike. I do not like straps. They hide the calipers of these beautiful bikes. Yeah. And because of what Marcus did with the forks, I don't need straps. Yep. And that's amazing. That's one of the reasons why I like working with Marcus because I, ha I don't have a need for straps. Don't have to pull anything. I'm actually going to remove the Brox riser here for the steering dampener and, uh, you know, lower it again. I, I can't stress enough. This is actually an, a fully active suspension. Mm -hmm. It will soak up bumps. Uh, you know, you actually bumped, bounced up and down. Now, yes. most guys, when they quote unquote cut forks, they basically just put a spacer underneath the rebound rod and then the spring is super stiff. Yeah. And so that bounces you off bumps. Yeah. Whereas this is actually a rideable street suspension. Yes. Uh, and it, I can't believe the amount of compliments we get for the, uh, this setup. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. It, it, they, people love it because they can street it. They got the lower look. Yeah. Um, and you can see the forks aren't sticking, you know. Sticking up. Yeah, That's yeah. another thing I yeah. like about it. They're flush. Yeah. And OEM style. Yeah. I Absolutely. really hate when I see some of my butchered bike buddies and yeah. their forks are poking out. It looks retarded. Yeah, chimney stacks. <laughs> yeah, the chimney stacks. That's, that, that's a better way to describe it. Yeah. Uh, we use, you know, we have solid works here. We can design stuff in 3D. Yeah. Uh, we can do so much stuff and it's just a lot of fun. Yes. Well and said, my friend. Fun, fun having you here, too. Thank you, man. Thank you, buddy. It was great working with you, you today. You too, man. So, uh, guys, he did a great job on my H2. Stay tuned for the next video where I test this thing out on the filthy streets. And we got more amazing videos coming. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for viewing the channel. I'm going to get the heck out of here and head home. Yes, sir.